What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk through questions that I got. Lots of questions. So I posted on the community tab. Oh, before I get too uh, far in this video, I want to thank today's sponsor of the video, Harry's. Thank you guys for sponsoring the video. So I posted over on the community tab on YouTube and I posted on Facebook um, just questions. Questions for you guys to ask me. I said, hey, you guys got any questions for me? I have sort of looked at these, not really. I mean, just read a few of them, just kind of glanced at them. Some of the questions are awesome questions. Some of them are, eh. I'm gonna get through as many as I can because uh, a lot of questions were asked. So here we go. How old were your kids when you took them on their first backpacking trip? <sighs> Man, they were probably six was the youngest I've taken kids on backpacking trips. That's when they maybe started. Uh, my oldest son started when he was probably like eight. Self-care tips, as in how do you recover from long hike days at camp from multi-day treks back home? Uh, buy the best sleep system you can and <laughs> use it at camp. I recover with sleep, so that's how I do it. What would you say is an ideal pack weight range for your younger children, my 10 year old, for example? Um, I don't know, I think that depends on the kid. My kids can carry a base weight of maybe nine, 10, 12 pounds, and then food and water on top of that. They're pretty resilient kids. Plus, it depends on what kind of backpack you're getting. So, oh, here's a good backpack for you. Um, this is the Osprey Ace 50 backpack. This is a fantastic kid's backpack. Comes in a couple different sizes. Uh, they're kind of expensive, but uh, they're great for kids. It grows with them. You can adjust it. Oh, and I got one more here. Uh, this is the REI Tarn 40 backpack. This is another good kid's backpack, which I believe this one adjusts. Yep, this one adjusts with their age as well. So uh, a couple of kid's backpack suggestions for you guys. What has your experience been when buying razors slash shaving equipment from stores? Do you find it frustrating when you're queuing up to buy overpriced blades or end up using poor quality blades that irritate your skin? What a great segue for today's sponsor. Men, you deserve quality craftsmanship, simple design, and modern conveniences, and a great shave. I mean, really, look at this. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Harry's founders, Jeff and Andy, were tired of overpaying for overdesigned razors. They realized they weren't alone. Their answer, start Harry's. Raise a bunch of money and uh, buy a razor factory in Germany. I have been using Harry's for quite some time now. They sent this whole setup to me, wanted me to unbox it on video, which I didn't do. I just couldn't wait to open it, so I <laughs> opened it anyway. This is what they send you. Awesome razors, nicely weighted, five blade razor cartridge. It's a cool little carrying case for when you're on the go. Shaving cream. Extra razors, refills starting at only $2. Also, they support great causes too. They give 1% of every sale to help promote better mental health care for men and veterans. And to help support those that need it right now, Harry's is actually donating $1 million worth of shaving supplies to hospitals across the US. You can redeem your trial set for just $3, just $3 when you go right here, harrys.com forward slash Dan Becker. And redeem your offer and join the 10 million other people that have enjoyed Harry's. When are you going to come hike Eastern Sierra in California? Let's go. Uh, buy me a plane ticket, I'm there. When are you coming to Montana? Same thing. Uh, how often do you take breaks when you're hiking? Um, I take breaks mainly when I eat or drink or if I'm tired. <laughs> I try not to take super long breaks because I tend to like stiffen up, like my muscles stiffen up and I get sore when I take breaks from the hike. So the less time I spend breaking, for me anyway, the better. Um, ever gonna do a cheap alternative to my gear video? I think I've got quite a few cheap gear videos out there already. So I don't know, we'll see. Review the hike and bike design and or Yosemite. Seems like a pretty good option for those starting out, yet no one seems to talk about them. Reasonably priced, fairly lightweight. I really don't know much about those ones, so I, yeah, that's, I'm probably one of those people that aren't talking about them. Fastest way to dry shoes on the trail. I have a pair of Merrill Moab Edge 2s. Um, leave them outside of your tent overnight and take out the insoles. At least that's what I do. It seems to kind of speed things up a little bit. What would you do differently gear-wise between a through hike versus an out and back hike? I've never through hiked really anything. Um, I mean, I sort of through hiked like a shorter trail, like maybe 40, 50 miles. Uh, nothing major. So with that being said, I'm probably not the best person to ask that question to. 
Um, I would probably just make sure I'm carrying the lightest weight stuff possible and I would get rid of non-essentials as much as possible, like kind of luxury style stuff, uh, as long as it doesn't affect my hike. Tips on not feeling bad for missing church on a hike. <laughs> Uh, you can always hike with Jesus. You should really do a video with your family and a gear loadout with all of them. Yeah, uh, I would love to do that actually if I can get my entire family to go hiking with me. What's the best tent for family tenting? Three to four people. God, that's such a great question. I, I, I don't know. If you find one, let me know because I would love to see that tent myself. How well does your tummy feel after taking a nature dump? <laughs> Okay, trying to find out which sleeping bags to get for down to 30 degrees for the wife and I. What do you recommend? I know Outdoor Vitals has some sleeping bags that are pretty reasonably priced. Um, yeah, Big Agnes maybe, Nemo makes some good sleeping bags, Western Mountaineering makes some fantastic sleeping bags, but they're super expensive. Um, next question, is Outdoor Vitals good? Yes, Outdoor Vitals is definitely a good company to uh, to uh, use while you're hiking. Um, I have a lot of their gear and have never had any of it fail on me once. Have you ever cowboy camped? Would you or do you like the comfort of a tent hammock? So um, I've slept outside without any bug protection before, but that's in the winter. Uh, cowboy camp in like summer and that kind of stuff? I don't know, probably not. I just like the comfort of a tent or hammock as you so eloquently asked. What are the best Midwest hiking trails? I live in the Chicago suburbs. Uh, Kettle Moraine in Wisconsin, Picture Rocks in Michigan, Porcupine Mountains way up north in Michigan, um, Manistee River, uh, Charles Dean Wilderness uh, in Indiana, Southern Illinois, you've got the Shawnee National Forest. So there's a lot of great places to hike. What's the best way to find new trails to backpack on? Um, I think there's a good app out there called All Trails, which is uh, just kind of a community-based app that allows people to put their trail information in and upload their routes and all that stuff. And so it's a pretty cool place to find new places to hike. Do you have any trails you would like to hike outside of the USA? Um, I don't know about specific trails, but I would love to hike like um, Scotland, uh, New Zealand, uh, places like that. So yeah, very green and new outdoor backpacking YouTube channel here. How did you learn what worked for your channel to build it and make it successful? Um, great question. I would just say if you're starting out a YouTube channel, especially in the outdoor world, just be you. Don't be like anybody else. If you try to be like somebody else, people are going to figure it out and uh, be as honest as you possibly can. Which do you like better, InReach Mini or Bivy Stick 2? Um, currently, it's uh, the InReach Mini is what I have been using and prefer. What piece of gear has surprised you the most? Pick both a bad and a good one. Oh my gosh, that is such a good question. What surprised me the most? Um, hmm. uh, I think for a bad piece of gear, the Sawyer Micro surprised me because I was convinced it was gonna do good. Total piece of garbage. And for a good piece of gear that surprised me the most, I would say um, would be, honestly, my UGQ quilt. When I originally got my first UGQ quilt, I was not super convinced it was gonna be an awesome quilt, and they are hands down the best quilt on the market, in my personal opinion. Do you like potatoes? <laughs> Duh. If you were stranded on a desert island for one month and could only bring one piece of camping gear, what would it be? <laughs> um, my poop kit. I see vids of people hiking through water but never the aftermath. You've got water in your way. What's the best way to handle it and the best footwear? Um, Man, great question. I would say make sure your footwear has good tread on it, okay? And if you're concerned about maybe wet feet, make sure you don't buy waterproof shoes because they don't dry out very well. September is National Preparedness Month. With all your hiking camping gear, do you have go bags packed for your wife and the kids? I don't, I, I probably should do that. That's a great, great point. How the heck do you keep your zipper from getting stuck on the Rainfly flap? Um, you, you're just careful when you unzip it. When backpackers are giving their pack weights, they never give total weight. Why? <laughs> I don't know, I try to give total weight. I, are you referring to like food, water, and fuel? Those are considered consumables, so, um, and that totally varies 
uh, on each person, the hike, where they're going, season, that kind of stuff. You talk about gear for your trips. What about when you go with your family? Do you still go light and everyone gets their own gear or do you switch and do more car camping style gear? If the latter, what tent? Um, yeah, so no, I, I've got a ton of gear here. So uh, I have enough that my family can pretty much all go ultra light. Uh, so that's kind of what we use. Um, but if I didn't have that, I would just bring what I could and I would find gear that we could share. So for instance, a big tent and then maybe one person carries the rain fly, the other person carries the tent, another person carries the poles, kind of divide up the weight and that kind of thing. Dan, if you could hike with anyone dead or alive, you could bring them back for the hike. <laughs> Who would that be? <laughs> I would feel sorry for anybody I brought back from the dead just to hike with me and then send them back to the dead. Heading to Pictured Rocks for the first time in October, what would be a can't miss spot while on the trail, maybe on the way to and from the trail? Oh man, that's a great question. I really don't know. If you could only keep one of your hammocks, which one would it be? Uh, my war bonnet hammock. What is the correct way to hang a bear bag? Are there different techniques or tricks? Okay, so I'm still pretty new to hanging bear bags myself. In the area that I live, there's not a ton of places that bears are a super big concern unless you're going a decent distance. Um, and then I just sort of, you know, tie a rock bag to a line, throw it over a branch, make sure it's like four or five feet away from the tree and maybe 10 feet off the ground if I can. Um, and then I just tie it off to anything to hold it up. And I use probably knots that I shouldn't use because I'm not much of a knot tire. Would you ever hike in the Adirondacks? Uh, yeah. Do you ever include your camera gear as part of your base weight? Uh, good question. I think I sort of do both. Like. I feel like you guys probably care more about what my base weight is without camera gear, because a lot of you guys don't film your hikes, you're just kind of doing the backpacking thing. Um, but I do carry anywhere from four to eight pounds, maybe even more when I'm like bringing my drone and that kind of thing of camera gear. So base weight for me is super, super important right now. So I try to lower my base weight as much as possible to compensate for the camera gear. Can you talk more about the Garmin inReach? Does it give you two-way message capability? Yes, it does. Um, you can text your family, they can text you all through uh, the device or the app. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, which is it going to be? Beats, Bears, or Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> uh, what is your cheapest piece of gear that you use on the trail? Oh man, I don't know, maybe my ground cloth? It's like either Polycro or Tyvek. Dan, what is your opinion on the Ursac? What is your preferred method to contain your food? I've never used an Ursac. I've heard they're great. I've heard like even national parks are starting to approve them to be like uh, as usable as bear canisters. So that's really uh, what I got on that. And then preferred method to contain your food. I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna buy an Ursac because I would rarely use it. So I would probably rent like a bear canister once I got to a location, because you can do that, uh, where the bears are at. So I don't have to uh, you know, buy one ahead of time. Any trips planned for the Sierras? No, but that would be pretty awesome. Um, planning on any trips out west? For this next year or two yes as a matter of fact next week um, i am backpacking in utah super excited about that what spot is on the top of your bucket list to go backpacking at uh glacier national park for sure all right guys if you like this video make sure you hit that like button also subscribe for more make sure you hit the bell notification so that i can send you a video every time it's released and i will see you on the next one